Hello, folks. I am stocking up on HA for different objects while I, I still have a lot of snow on the ground, like I've always said before. I'm not doing broadband while there's snow on the ground. If you saw my backyard, it's lit up like a Christmas tree right now. So I'm sticking with HA, and right now, I'm going after the Orion Nebula before it's gone for the year. Um, I, I, I didn't feel my first attempt was that good. I want to try it again because I without blowing out the core this time. And I'm going to try it with HA and LRGB. I've never done that before. I'm still planning to do that with the M82 Galaxy, which that's another one I've, I've done a part one on. So right now, my mean readout is 810. Uh, that's okay. It looks pretty clear outside right now. I'm doing one-minute exposures, and I've already tested this. I can do one-minute exposures with Unity game and not blow out the, the core with HA. And if you if I close this, you can even see that the core is not blown out, even before I try to make this image brighter. I mean, there's those stars right in the middle of it. There's the core. I mean, of course, if I go medium, it's going to look like that in SG Pro, but worry not. I, I've already seen it in SG in uh, PixInsight, and I think it's looking pretty cool. I'm going to try and capture as much HA as I can on this tonight before it goes out of view. I think I've only got a couple hours on it. This is one of those items in the uh, objects in the south where I don't have a lot of time because of obstructions. I'm not expecting my guiding to be very good either. Uh, 0.86, that's about as good as it gets for me when I'm pointing in the south, but I'll take it. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. So, anyway, um, that's all I got to share for now. I can't wait to see how this looks once I stack a couple hours worth of HA. Okay, I'll be back. Hey, I am back. I guess I was wrong when I said the .8 range is as good as I can get in the south. Because right now I'm back down to the .6 range. So, hooray for that. And I still haven't recalibrated my PhD2 guiding in probably a few weeks, so I wonder how long I can go without recalibrating, but I like it because I save a few minutes per night not having to do that. Okay, that's all I got. Okay, so I captured uh, over a little over two hours worth of data, 136 one-minute frames in HA, and that's about as most as I can do in my area before the this object becomes obstructed and I can't see it anymore. And uh, I, it was interesting, trying to stack this was not an easy task because PixInsight just did not want to stack all of my data. And I, I no matter what I seem to try, choosing different images as a reference, the most I could get uh, PixInsight to stack were 95 images. It was very interesting. So I just went back to Deep Sky Stacker and I tried to force it to stack everything and it stacked 136 out of 139. So you know what? I'm going with uh, Deep Sky Stacker this time. Even though I think PixInsight, when I compare stacked results, I think PixInsight does a better job of handling the noise. But you know what? Uh, there's a lot of signal coming from this object, and there's not a lot of noise to begin with anyway, so I think I can get by with Deep Sky Stacker. Now let's stretch it. This is what my data looks like. And I've already done a deconvolution on this data, which really, I couldn't see any difference before and after. So I don't know if it, it to me, it didn't really make much difference for this object. And uh, that's what, that's what uh, 136 minutes of data looks like. And let me show you what my final image looks like compared to the stack data. I cropped it and I really zoomed in. And uh, this, I was really interested in getting details in that core. Now, did I, did I peel away too much brightness? Some people like to keep more of that brightness, but I, I really dug in and I, I wanted to see the details even in this section here in the core area and you can even see those four little bright stars that really make up a lot of that brightness. I, I think that's where all that brightness comes from unless it's just really more of the that the gas and dust that's so bright I'm not even sure about that. So who knows what the heck I'm talking about. But anyway, I, I like peeling away all that, that dust 
And if, if you don't know how to do that, let me show you really quick. It's kind of interesting. So let me shrink the final image here. And, okay, this is a, li uh, a linear image. Let's make it nonlinear really quick here. And we'll do it the easy way with the, the screen transfer function and the histogram. And a lot of people say, well, you're not supposed to do it this way. Because when you, when you do it this way, you're actually also stretching the noise with it to make it nonlinear. And, and you don't want to do that. But now it's nonlinear the, the way I, what we just did here. The other way to do it is, let me show you really quick. Here, let's go back. Okay. So now it's, it's, it's back to being linear again. And if you, if you want to do the stretch without um, stretching all the noise with it, you would actually, uh, let's reset the histogram. I think this is the way you're supposed to do it. Um, oops, not that. Let's go to that. Pull up. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to drag this middle one all the way to the left here to make the screen preview. We see it's a little brighter now. And now we're going to drag this one on this arrow on the left here up until the curve starts. This is where you start to play with the brightness a little bit of the object. Just like that. We can make it right there. And you keep doing this, really, until this curve goes all the way to the left. I think i got a little room left there still. Let's play around with the brightness. Is that okay right there? Yeah, it's okay. And I think that's good. That's I think that's how other people do it. A lot of times I don't see a big difference, and especially with this object, where there's not a lot of noise to begin with. So we'll work with this this one. We This is how, this is how I did it the manual way instead of the automatic way. Now, I know I've shown this, this feature a lot of times with the HDMR multi-scale transfer, and it's really a useful feature, peeling away that dust. And let's just try number seven here, a number of layers. Put that at seven and see what happens on this image. Okay, now we ran number seven. And right off the bat, it's not a, it's not a bad. And, uh, I like how it handled the core there. And I don't know if I was satisfied with that. I don't know if it's obvious that I, I did that and that the core here maybe looks a little brighter than the rest. Like, look at my final image. I, I think I did a, maybe the final one in my view looks a, a little bit better in the way I did the core because I think I think if the brightness is more even all the way around in my final image than the way I did it here. And what I did, and, and maybe, maybe you like the one on the left, but the, the one on the right, what I did is I masked off certain sections at a time and then did a different HDMR multi-scale transfer. Maybe I did six levels on this section. Maybe I did seven or eight levels on this section. I don't really know off the top of my head. But I can show you how quickly it is, how easy it is to just do certain sections. Uh, I mean, at least the way I do it. Like, watch this. Um, let, let's undo what we just did here. Now we've got all the brightness back. Say I want to just um, control the brightness on, on this feature here. I don't know what we call this area. I call it the head, but who knows. Uh, I'm going to create a mask just to you know, protect the rest of it while I work on the, the, the head there. Work on the head. That's, that sounds terrible. Let's do this. We're going to create range here. Let's make a mask. All right. So right off the bat, we can see how this section is separate from the rest of the image because it's so bright. So, oops. Let's go here and we'll control the smoothness a little bit. Now we've got our mask. Let's execute it. So now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up Clone Stamp and work on the mask here. I set it for 250, and let's erase all of this. We'll do it quickly. I don't care. We're not going to be perfect here. Uh, oops. We're just cloning all that white space and getting rid of it. We just want to preserve the, the head. Now, I'm not being perfect here, so don't worry about it. Let's execute that. Now we've got just that head portion there. Now let's drag this mask over. 
see how it's a perfect fit right over that, but we want to invert it because we're, we're working on that, that head there. All right, now let's just, we don't need to show the mask. Now let's, let's run, uh, where is it, uh, HDMI multi-scale transform. Let's just run number six on it and see what happens. And you can see right there how we only updated this portion of the nebula. So let's go back. You see that? We peeled away that brightness. And we got now we can see lots more detail and crevices in that area. And I could have gone lighter. I could have raised a number of layers so it's not so dramatic. But that's how you do it. If, if you want to just do portions of the nebula at a time, you can sort of pick off certain sections with the mask. That's I do that a lot. Um, when I'm when I'm updating stuff and I and I did it for this and that's how I got everything really to look uh, very uniform in brightness so and I liked it but maybe it's not for everyone's taste uh, like I said so now that's all I've got to share folks I will see you later